Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, and thank you for stopping by. All right, guys, if you are not aware, we have got an assault weapons ban that has passed the house. Now, there is so much that we have got to break down here. First of all, we've got to address, wait, you pulled it, then you put it back in place. What was going on there? What was the actual vote counts? What actually happened on the floor today? Then we got to talk about the next steps. We've got to talk about all of that stuff, and that is what we're going to break down in this video right now. Now, everything is going to be linked in the description box below, and if you guys are new, we would love to have you join the fold because we need as many people as we can in the fold so we can get more information out more quickly and more efficiently, and if you think we earn that subscription, we would love to have you. Now, one of the cool things about this video is this is a sponsored video, which allows me to go more in depth and spend more time breaking down all the details, which is why this is a longer video. I'm going to say a quick word from our sponsor, Surfshark, right now, and then we're going to break this all down, and I'm going to leave you exactly with our next steps. Surfshark VPN gives you the power to protect your privacy. Control your personal data, access content safely, and unlock exclusive benefits. And it has a 30-day money-back guarantee, and I'm going to walk you through a few of the reasons why I think we all can benefit from this, particularly in our line of interest. One of the most important things that Surfshark VPN allows you to do is to control your personal data. Securing yourself online from those annoying tracking apps that we know are happening, which are enabling those cookies which seem to predict our every move and all of our wants and desires. Well, no longer with Surfshark VPN. It will also allow you to travel the world digitally. For example, look what I can do with Netflix. More content from different regions right here. If I type in Marvel, you can see a certain amount of titles will pop up. However, when I engage Surfshark VPN, different region, Reload that bad boy, and you're going to see different titles are going to pop up, which makes you have more content through Surfshark VPN. Now, purchasing a 24-month VPN plan is seriously one of the best plans available. And if you use my link right here, you can get three months for free. It's that easy. Just download the VPN via my link in the description box and enter my promo code you see on the screen right now. Click in the description box below to find out more, and thank you so much for your interest in Surfshark VPN. All right, so thank you to Surfshark VPN for making this video possible. Now let's get to the work that we have to do because as I mentioned in the intro, we've got a new assault weapons ban that passed the house. Now, just if you're keeping score at home, this is exactly where we've been talking about where it was gonna go. It was more than likely going to pass the house much more easily than the Senate. Now, like I said, we talked about that a lot. Even the mainstream media was saying, yeah, the house is a thing, but the Senate's gonna be a little bit more of a challenge. It was a big deal when the House pulled the vote on Wednesday, and that's what we're about to break into. But this is the actual vote. This happened about 30 minutes ago. It actually became passed in the House. There's the actual vote totals, 217 to 213. They snuck by by the skin of their teeth. You had two Republicans jump ship and jump and vote for it, 215 Democrats, five Democrats voted nay, and 208 Republicans uh, voted nay as well. Like I said, total was 217 to 213. This was as close as it possibly could have gotten without failing in the House, which is indicative of the concerning nature of this bill. But that's where we're at. So now let me walk you through how we actually got here, because I know I feel the same way as some of you guys do. Wait a minute. Wednesday, they came out and said, we're not voting on this at all. This is not happening. We're going to punt it till mid-August or late August. And now all of a sudden overnight, it goes into a bill on Friday where they say, hey, we're voting on it. It worked out. Here's all the bills. We got the votes. Let's do it. Let's walk through that because this is incredibly important. Like I said, everything is linked in the description, but it's important to know what happened. House Democrats tee up last minute vote Friday on assault weapons ban. This is from today at 1249. So this is pre the vote being actually confirmed. Okay, so this is what the media was saying about what happened. This is important because you have to understand what they're saying. House Democrats announced a last minute vote on a bill to ban assault weapons on Friday looking to pass a highly anticipated legislation before lawmakers break for the August recess, which is what we've talked about. That's nothing new. But here's what they did in order to make this happen. The House took a key step toward passing the assault weapons ban Friday morning, approving a resolution for same-day authority that allows the chamber to fast-track top priorities. So what they did was they put it to the House and they said, hey, H.R. 1300, this is something that we need to vote on to make this an a, uh, expedited voting process so we can vote on the same day, which brought up 1808. That's all that happened here. They put it to the floor. They said, let's do debate. It passed debate. Then they said, let's expedite the vote. They expedited the vote, and then they actually made the vote happen, of which they passed 217 to 213. So that's the sequence of events. 
That's what they had to do to get it in order. Now, check this out. The House is slated to debate and vote on a bill front later Friday. As I mentioned, it was written earlier today. During her weekly press conference on Friday, Pelosi said she expects the measure to pass. And she was correct. It passed by a sliver. All right. But now let's get back to why did they halt the vote? Because everything in here is connected. This is not just AWB and assault weapon bans. This is not just police funding. This is not the PLCAA. This is all integrated together. Check this out. This is what she said earlier. Pelosi announced on Wednesday that the House would delay votes on the assault weapons ban and community safety legislation to give lawmakers more time to negotiate remaining disagreements on policy provisions. Now, that's where we were on Wednesday. In fact, that was the stance on Thursday. Late Thursday night, they changed it up and said, no, no, we're going to vote on Friday. What happened? This is what they did. And this is important to understand how they navigated this. Democrats initially planned to move the assault weapons ban and community safety legislation under the same rule. So they tried to do the exact same thing on both of these bills. But some liberals have uh, raised issues with a lack of accountability in the police bills. Pelosi ultimately decided to separate the two measures and take up the assault weapons ban on Friday, punting the police funding legislation to a later date. So what they tried to do was they tried to get everything under the same bill, the same um, expedited movement. It didn't work because the liberals were not in, uh, in line with the police funding. So Pelosi on Thursday split the bills put the bill for the AWB to the House of Rules Committee, it passed, and now you are here today where it got to the floor and then they expedited the whole process. That should demystify what just happened and how it was able to do a about face so quickly because they decoupled it and then they did some little maneuvering. That's what happened. Now, this is important because this is the part where we start to get into where are we going now, what's the next steps. The House to vote on a bill banning assault weapons. And the bill comes roughly two decades after Congress left su such restrictions lapse. Again, written earlier today, but this is an important piece. While the assault weapons ban may clear the House, such legislation is not likely to advance in the Senate, where Democrats would need at least 10 Republican votes to overcome the filibuster. Something that we've been talking about a lot on this channel is that filibuster is still in place. It hasn't been removed. Nothing has changed. It's very similar to H.R. 8 and H.R. 1446, which are still sitting on the shelves waiting to be voted on. Now they can add H.R. 1808 to the same litany of gun control bills. Now, the interesting thing and the fascinating thing about this is H.R. 8 and 1446 were much less on a level of gun control than an AWB, which is H.R. 1808. It's important to understand they're all infringements, but if they are not going to vote on H.R. 8 and H.R. 1446, and they also have an accompanying bill that pairs up with 1808, which they just passed in the House, already in the Senate from Dianne Feinstein, it makes you wonder what that means for the Senate if they aren't taking up any of those. Now, I am not a prophet, but I can see that there's something there about those bills being contentious that they're still sitting there. Anyway, that's that part. But check this out. We got to do a little bit more because this is important, the details. And then we'll talk about where we're going. This is from the article, House Dems set to vote on assault weapons ban after drama over police deal. The chamber is preparing for a momentous, if largely symbolic, vote after an attempted agreement on police accountability fell flat. This is the part where I start getting really irritated and upset. I understand if you are going to be a gun controller. I don't agree with you, but at least I know what you are. You're going to be a gun controller. You're going to infringe, and it's going to be my mission in life to oppose you on that front. Got it. Cool. Battle line's drawn. However, the part that really irks me is they are putting forward votes that they know are going to have a hard time in the Senate because of the filibuster, and you have to peel off 10 Republicans, knowing that they're only symbolic in order to manipulate people to vote for them in the election when they're just starting their election um, um, uh, politicking in August. That's the part that really irritates me, because it's based on manipulation. Even if they know it's not going to happen, they can still say they did something so they can get more votes and maintain more power over you. And that's the part that I really get irritated by. Like I said... I am not a prophet. I cannot guarantee you what's going to happen in the Senate. I can tell you what's likely going to or not going to happen from my observation. But that really irks me because the symbolic nature keeps popping up around H.R. 1808. And that's why we need to fight every single day. And if you need to remember something for November, this is a really great symbolic thing to remember of what they're willing to throw on the altar of symbolism to get power of your rights. And that's where I get really amped. But let's keep going because there's more to talk about here. 
Even after a frenetic bout of arm-twisting Friday, Democrats remained short of the votes needed for the policing package. Pelosi and her leadership team made a decision around lunchtime to vote only on the assault weapons ban, decoupling it from the contentious policing bills to satisfy a large chunk of their party eager to vote before August because they want to fundraise, they want to politic, they want to campaign. This is more. This is from Politico. This is the third source I've shown you. Got one more thing for you. This is a Democrat who actually spoke on the, on the terms of anonymity so they don't get in trouble. Quote, Right now, we should be voting to support the police. 99% of Democrats in America support the police said one vulnerable Democrat who was frustrated by the progressives' revolt on the bill and who spoke candidly on condition of anonymity. Quote, If we don't hold the House, it's all for nothing. That phrase, If we don't hold the House, it's all for nothing. So are you saying the symbolic nature of these votes were only to maintain your power and control in the House? And if you don't maintain the House, all the fighting and infighting that you just did was for nothing? Because that's how I read that. That's why I get so irritated. That's my own personal little angst around this entire thing is because they're manipulating people. And I really despise that. So now let's talk about where we're going next. As I told you, this bill was, I mean, this video is going to be comprehensive. The next steps for H.R. 1808 is it has to go into the Senate. It's basically waiting there for Chuck Schumer to decide that it's going to be pulled up for a vote or not for a vote. In order, let's just say, worst case scenario, it gets pulled up for a vote. What happens at that point is the Senate actually has to get 10 Republicans to bounce away from the Demo from the Republican side and overcome the filibuster. I know a lot of you right now are saying, well, it happened with the red flag, with the bipartisan deal, the gun deal. That is a different scenario. I know it's definitely an infringement and it's definitely a betrayal, but it's a far cry for the Republicans who are saying, well, we voted for some funding and we did some safety in school stuff and we did some mental health things versus all out AWB, two months away from an election. Like I said, and I'm going to reiterate, I'm not a prophet, but where we are right now is exactly where we thought we were going to be going into August. We knew that they were going to pass the bill through the House. They threw some, some fireworks and some theatrics in there, but at the end of the day, we're still in the exact same place. We have to maintain our power in the Senate. We have to maintain our energy on the centers that we have there. And come November, you have got to leave them with no alternative. Leave that house so red that Nancy can't find any blue unless she's got her glasses on. You got to make the Senate turn red so that Chuck Schumer can't do anything with bills that he wants to pass. This is where we take action. We can do this. I have laid this out for you. Let me know what you guys think in the, in the uh, comments field below. And I'll see you tomorrow morning where we continue our fight for our rights. Thank you so much, and I'll see you then.